Good evening, everyone. As the title of my talk suggests, I'm here to discuss teachers and teaching. Everyone knows that teachers make a difference in students' lives. I'm sure each of you here tonight can think of a teacher who made a difference in your own life. However, fewer people understand that teaching is a very complex activity that it takes knowledge, skill, and practice to become a teacher who changes students' lives. Part of what I do at UCSB is teach those studying to be secondary science and mathematics teachers. I help these beginning teachers learn to teach science and mathematics in ways that are accessible, interesting, and empowering to all students, including students whose home language is not English students who's, who researchers call English learners or multilingual learners. I guess I'm a lot shorter. <laughs> I'm currently engaged in a study of what beginning science and mathematics teachers learn about teaching multilingual learners as a result of completing their teacher education program. A few of these beginning teachers are themselves multilingual learners. As an example, one beginning mathematics teacher who was also a multilingual learner reflected on what she was learning in her teacher education program. So this is a quote from one of her interviews. She said, I know what type of demographics I want to teach in and what type of students I want to serve. I think those are students who mirror me and we share similar upbringing and things that I can relate to. I speak Spanish, so I think it's important for me to teach kids who also speak another language. It's not rare, but not a lot of teachers speak Spanish, and I think it would be a shame if I didn't teach in a community where there's a lot of Spanish-speaking students, or students who are bilingual, or students who are English learners. In my honors mathematics class, I have 10 students of color. One of them, she's Latina, and she definitely talks a lot more. Anytime I ask the, quest, the class for questions, she's always the first one to raise her hand. I think that wouldn't have happened as fast had I not resembled her and had a similar upbringing. I am really aware of what type of students I would like to teach because I just want to be true to that. I want kids to see themselves in me. This beginning teacher is a multilingual learner herself, but most teachers are not. And while being a multilingual learner provides her with some insights into teaching other multilingual learners, all beginning teachers can benefit from focused training in this area. So to help beginning science and mathematics teachers think about ways to better serve all students, including their multilingual learners, a colleague and I be begin our methods course with the following. First, we share that multilingual learners constitute 4.6 million, or 9.4% of all students in the US classrooms. In California, there are almost 1.3 million multilingual learners, over 20% of students in California schools, and a total of 2.6 million students in California, or over 42% speak a language other than English in their homes. Second, we emphasize that multilingual learners are diverse. Their diversity includes their home language, the number and proficiency of languages spoken, country of origin, culture, ethnicity, personal history, gender identity, socioeconomic status, among other things. Third, multilingual learners, like all students, bring resources into the classroom that teachers should not only value, but elicit and use to build on in their instruction. And finally, language and content are related. To learn a discipline requires engaging in core practices and, and concepts, as well as in 
language and literacy activities. So as part of our course, we encourage our beginning mathematics and science teachers to consider four principles for effective instruction in, uh, in teaching multilingual learners. The first principle asks these beginning teachers to identify, celebrate, and use the knowledge and skills of their students, their families, and their communities in their instruction. The second principle asks beginning teachers to engage their multilingual learners in the same kinds of opportunities and activities often reserved only for native English speaking students. These principle, this principle focuses on the interconnections between sense making and language learning. The third principle encourages beginning teachers to engage their multilingual learners in the language of science or mathematics. Beginning teachers are asked to provide opportunities for students to receive comprehensible input through reading and listening and to provide comprehensible output through speaking and writing. And then the fourth principle asks beginning teachers to attend to the language demands and the tasks they assign their students and to implement appropriate support so that all students can participate in the classroom that, so that they can read disciplinary text share their ideas and reasoning in whole class and small group discussions, and communicate science information in writing. So to help these beginning teachers better understand and practice these four principles of effective science and mathematics instruction, we ask them to engage in a lesson cycle. And this lesson cycle includes development, implementation, and reflection of a lesson. We pair the beginning science and mathematics teachers together in partners and ask them to develop an initial lesson, then interview a multilingual student about part of that lesson, meet with and receive feedback from the instructor, implement the lesson in their own classroom, and then reflect on what they learn from the process. And to scaffold this lesson cycle, we give them a checklist to ensure that they address each of the four principles of effective instruction. So in conducting research on these four principles in intersection with the lesson cycle, we have found that beginning science and mathematics teachers understand their multilingual learners better, identify strengths and limitations of their own lessons, and also identify concrete ways that they can improve these lessons in the future. As one example, a beginning science teacher um, reflected on her building a food web lesson that she implemented in a biology classroom. So this is just part of her lesson reflection. But she, she wrote, when looking back at the key principles that we incorporated throughout the lesson, I think there are some that we hit on more than others. When looking at bringing in students' funds of knowledge to the lesson, which is one of the principles, I think having students think about which of these species they see in their everyday lives is a great idea. In this way, students will be able to identify and connect with the material. Also, we could have shown pictures of a local marsh or pond area with these species to further invest the students in the lesson. This lesson, I feel, was relatively challenging in terms of the cognitive demand, which is the second principle. Because this activity did not necessarily have a correct answer, and it was an activity where there was a lot of content knowledge that students needed to string together to succeed, I think that this task was more difficult than a regular group activity or an individualized assignment. So going forward, we plan to continue to conduct research on beginning science and mathematics teachers, understanding of multilingual learners. And I just wanted to close by thanking my colleagues and graduate students and, and the beginning science and mathematics teachers who are participating in this study. Thank you.